Hey y'all, it's Riley again. Today we're going to go over basic commands to use in the Linux terminal window and a little bit more about how Linux works in general. So obviously I'm not using a Linux computer right now, this is Windows, but I have one running using VirtualBox. Um, if you weren't around for my last two videos and you're just here to learn Linux things, don't worry about this part. Um, but if you're curious about how I can have a Linux computer running inside of my Windows computer, sort of, I have a video about how to set one up. You can click the middle of your screen right now. There should be a pop-up that'll send you that video first, and then you can come to this video and um, follow along with me. So the image that I'm running right now was created specifically to run a software called Chime. But the things I'm going to tell you about work for any Linux terminal window. As long as it's a Linux machine, then um, most of these codes should work. Most of the commands are going to be the exact same in Unix. So if you have a Mac and you're doing this, pretty much everything should work the same. You might be wondering why someone would want to type things in, you know, the old way, straight, straight into a terminal like this one, instead of clicking around in a folder system like this one. It's probably been a long time since you've used a command line interface to use a computer, um, unless of course you're a programmer or a mathematician. You know, there's, there's a few exceptions to that, but most people use graphical interfaces like the one on the right here. You can click on things, there's cute little icons, it hides the things you don't need to see. In general, it's much easier to work to work this on the right than it is on the left, especially because you don't have to memorize anything. You can just point and click. But there are definite perks to using command line interface. For example, if you're doing something besides just moving and copying files, it's really hard to get commands or scripts into these on the right. Really, you have to use one. Even if you right click, you only get a few options of things you can do to your folders and your files. But by typing commands into a terminal like this, you can do almost anything. It also lets you do a lot of repetitive things with a lot less effort. But I'm not really going to get into those right now. I'm going to teach you the basics of using an interface like this, how to see where you are in the file system, how to move and copy files, how to delete things, and a few little tips and tricks about how to do it more efficiently. So when you pull up your terminal window, you should pretty much see a dark purple box, might be black. In any case, you should have the name of your user, and then at the end, you should have a dollar sign. If you see a pound symbol or a hashtag sign instead of that dollar sign, you're currently running the terminal as a super user, and that's pretty dangerous unless you know exactly what you're doing. Trust me, you really don't want to be doing that. So anyway, you should see something similar to this. If you're running a Chime image like I am, you should see pretty much exactly this. So the very first thing I'm going to teach you how to do is to virtually look around. This first command is called print working directory, and the abbreviation is PWD. That means if you want to do this command, type the letters PWD and press enter or return. Now you might be wondering, well, what did it do? It didn't look like it did much of anything. What it did was print where you are on your machine. So right now, we are in the same spot on both places. We're in the home folder for the Chime user in both spots. This might not seem significant now, but it's actually pretty easy to get lost using a command line interface because you can't quote unquote see your way around. So it's always good to check you are where you're supposed to be. The next thing I'm going to show you is called the list command. The abbreviation is ls. Type ls into your terminal and press enter. I have the window open on the right just so that we can check that what we're doing on the left is right. If you notice, I had it list the contents of the folder we were in and that lines up exactly with the folders over here. It says desktop, documents, downloads, music, public, videos. Basically, it told us what we knew all along over here. Now I'm going to show you something a little more interesting. What if we wanted to see all the files that weren't shown on the right? 
you might not know this, but for all the files you see, there are probably four or five that you don't. All the little files that keep your computer running smoothly that you don't actually have to see because you don't need to manipulate it all, they're automatic. Well, what if we wanted to see them anyway? Let's type our command ls. We're gonna do something called a dash option. Basically, it makes your command a little bit more specific. The dash option that we're gonna use is dash a. A stands for all. Now press enter. We got a lot more files this time. That's because we're seeing all the files, including the hidden ones. Well, what if we wanted to see a little more information about all of these files? What if we wanted, for example, how big they were or when they were made? There's another dash option for that. LS dash L. L is short for long format. Now I didn't do A this time, so I didn't get all of the files, but this tells us some more information about the size and timestamp on the folders that we see over here on the right. Okay, so we have a list of things and we have more details on them. You might be wondering, can you combine these in any way? As it turns out, you can, and it's very easy. Type in ls space, do your dash, now type in a l. So you have both the all command and the long format command. Now we have all the files and we have their long versions. I'm going to show you one more dash option for the list command, but I do have one more important thing to say. When typing in dash options, you need to put them in alphabetical order or it's not going to work. For example, the one I want to show you is called human readable, and it has to do with these numbers you see in this column. Those are actually the sizes, but it's hard to understand since they're just like a long list of numbers. So we're going to do ls dash a h l. H is for human readable, A is for all, and L is for long form, like we did before. Press enter. It looked like the line just shrunk. Actually, it printed again, but it was the same information, just slightly altered, which is why it gave that impression. If you notice these numbers now, they have kilobytes. Uh, they would also do mega and gigabytes if you wanted. This puts those numbers in perspective a little bit, at least I think so. But just to test out the rule that I told you, Let's type in ls and dash, let's do h-a-l. Since that includes all of them, it should work, right? If you press enter, it doesn't work. It just deletes it. The order of your letters and your commands is super important in this. For example, if you're trying to overwrite file B using file A and you accidentally get them backwards, then you'll have twice the number of bad files, and you'll have accidentally deleted your good one. All I'm saying is keep your wits about you. The next command I'm going to show you is called cd, it's short for change directory. Let's say we wanted to move to the desktop from our home folder. Well, right now, if we did pwd to make sure we we're in the right spot, it would show us that we're in our home folder slash chime, and using the list, we know that going to the desktop is an option, so let's use the cd command. Type in cd space desktop. Use a capital D. Make sure that your capitalization matches. Desktop. And press enter. So now we're in the desktop. If we were to print the working directory right now, it would deliver home slash chime slash desktop. That's exactly where we want to be. I'll do the same thing over here on the right. Okay, so I basically showed you how to do the equivalent of clicking on a folder, but what if we wanted to get to a specific place that was maybe in a different branch of the tree? Well, it turns out you can type in the exact location of whatever directory you want to be in. So say I wanted to get into the shared folder. You can see it over here. I could type in cd space slash home slash chime slash desktop slash shared underscore folder and press enter. 
If I want to check that I'm actually in the shared folder, I can print working directory. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the right just so that we can follow along. Now you might be distracted visually by this increasingly long line here. If you want to get rid of that, it's pretty easy. Type in ps1 equals apostrophe dollar sign apostrophe and that should simplify things for you. Now it's just a dollar sign. There's more space to type instead of that very long username slash location. There are a few shortcuts you can use when referring to file locations in Linux. The first one is the tilde. Experiment by typing in ls, so list, and then tilde. The tilde represents your home directory. If you ever want to refer to something and skip the slash home slash username slash, you can just do tilde slash. It's the exact same thing. That saves you a little bit of typing. In a similar vein, if you ever want to refer to the directory you're in for whatever reason, that's going to be a dot. So if I did ls and a dot, that lists all of the things that are in the shared folder right now. So those are all the things that are in the shared folder. Now, here's a tricky one. What if you wanted to list all the files in the parent folder to the one that you're currently in? So for us, that would be the desktop. Well, the shortcut to that is two dots. So ls space two dots, enter. And we can check if we go up to the desktop, it's just those, those two folders. You can use those in file locations to save yourself a little bit of typing.